So basically I'm looking for a generic piece of basalt, a possible jasper, I'm not sure, but I'm not looking for gem quality, I'm looking for sort of interesting things. It's so strange not looking for agates and chalcedony. I actually chose a spot where I know there isn't any here, so I don't get too distracted. <laughs> I'm looking for a strong looking stone that could be viewed on its own and be very powerful and almost allow you to look at it for hours and just view. I think I found it. It's a big one, I'll show you. Uh, I think it's this guy. I just like... That rock is beautiful, but I have another rock that I had found for this purpose about 20 years ago. It's just way too good to pass up using this rock as opposed to the one I just found. Now you'll see why. He is a beautiful, beautiful piece of basalt. He's rugged, dare I say it, ugly in the nicest possible way in terms of what people would consider a beautiful gemstone. And I'm going to showcase this guy in all his glory. Now the wood, the wood is amazing. It is a beautiful piece of Australian walnut. I wouldn't have found it if it wasn't for my mate. He's a legend and when he speaks about his wood, he speaks about them like I speak about my rocks or like any of us would speak about our rocks. His passion and knowledge for them is out of this world. And this wood has a story. These trees grew in an area that is now state forest, national forest. It's a, it's a protected area. They haven't been able to, to log them since sometime in the 1800s. His friend had gone out hiking, came across these massive half milled pieces of wood, which is how they took them out of there. And what they did, they would take a massive hammer and smack it in the end, and it would have leave a number imprint on there. He still has that imprint from the 1800s at his house, the off cut. So if you are in this area and you want to, to have a look at some beautiful pieces of wood, purchase them, get inspired by them, he's the man. And he will sit there and give you all the time of the day. What I'm going to do is indent this stone into here. This is basalt, by the way. Uh, traditionally, you use basalt. It doesn't have to be basalt from Japan either. This is gonna be hard. How am I gonna do this? I really need this to sit, oh gosh, nice and snug into the wood and where I've got it sitting. Oh uh, yeah. I have a feeling this is gonna be a lot of trial and error with getting him into the wood. This is gonna be harder than I thought. Yeah, this is gonna be harder than what I thought. I think, oh gosh, there's a lot back there. I've got gaps everywhere. This is meant to be a Zen stone, so I'm trying to be, whenever I'm working on a material, I try and be kind to the material. <laughs> I'm like, Sorry wood, sorry rock. But look, I think they're having a good time. This is by far way harder than what I thought it would be. I think, look, I'm going to head next door to my friend Scott. Oh, I got sawdust in my eyes. <laughs> and uh, he has a router and he's offered to help me. Hi friend, I need help. Dude, I, I've spent two hours doing something and it just wasn't, <laughs> it's not gonna. What I was trying to do is get that dug out mm -hmm. so that the rock sat in there. in there, but I'm scrapping it. This is Scott, hi Scott. I'm not gonna do it that way. What I'm thinking is I wanna try and make this a wooden dish. And just dig out the whole center. Shh, shh, we're What'd you just say? That's a large piece of wood you got there. <laughs> Good solid wood. Yeah. Good, hard wood. <laughs> yeah, Aussie wood. <laughs> oh, this is going downhill it's real fast. It's real, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yo, 
all walked out with our fingers. Thank you, Scott. No worries. Bye, friend. Bye. 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 <laughs> see you guys. Thank you. Bye. I'll see you at the fence. So to get rid of these, what I'm going to do, these are the marks left over from the router. I'm going to be cleaning up the wood a lot, but I'm going to go with this pattern. You know, I really like the inside of the tray to have that effect. It kind of looks pretty, I think. That's what I'm going for, so uh, let's see. done and I could not be happier with it. Basically, there's two ways to display a suiseki. One is on a daiza and then there's a suiban. A suiban is a Japanese ornamental dish. It's normally ceramic, but it can also be made out of wood. That's what this is, a suiban. Now for the rock, the suiseki. The rules behind suiseki is nothing. You should do nothing to it. You can clean it and you can oil it, but other than that, you can't cut it or polish it or remove any piece of it to make it more aesthetically pleasing. It just must be exactly how you found it. All right, let's put this together with the suey ban, some rocks, and uh, I think there's one more thing I want to get. Okay, one more thing. I think will help make this look pretty. I wanted to, I don't even want to show this. That is the bonsai I'm working on. There is wire all over it. You can see it's a beautiful piece. It's going to be amazing, but I can't display that yet. It's in training and I mean, it's going to be amazing, but with bonsai moss is a big thing. So I'm going to get a little, Piece of moss. All right. All right, I am nervous, nervous, nervous. I'm gonna go through the putting it together, then I'll show you it finally displayed inside because that is where it's gonna be displayed. It's looking good. It's looking good. Might seem like I'm being finicky, but I am. <laughs> now I've got an idea. Usually you put sand over all of this, sand or small pebbles, and you want to choose a lighter color. I'm shaking. I'm actually shaking. I'm nervous. <laughs> okay. But I'm going to not waste the beauty of this wood. I'm not going to cover it all up. I might be breaking a rule there, but for this, it's a bit of a, a Jesse twist on a suiseki. I'm going to give myself that permission. <laughs> Flatten it out. Now the rock is never supposed to be floating on top of the sand. It's meant to be in there, which is why you can see me pouring the sand around it. And anything with bonsai or a Japanese style of art form is perfection and patience. So I'm trying to be patient and precise with what I'm doing, where I'm putting things. While I'm doing this, I want to say a massive thank you to Anthony. I'm going to leave a link to his Instagram down below for the wood, the boutique wood that he sells. It's it's outstanding and I couldn't find anyone else in this area that would even match his passion for it. Also, I want to thank Thea Kellison for putting together this Makers Challenge and really 
bringing together a community of rock hounds to showcase and be challenged. So I think, how's that gonna look? Yeah, that's not be too. Yeah, that. What do you think, Goo? Do you think we did it? I think we did it, baby. Yeah. Good girl. All right, ready? How beautiful that thing is. Look at it. And I love how strong that stone is. The little bit of moss might be breaking the rules, but let me break them because I'm happy. Happy with it. The sand not going across there might be breaking the rules, but let me because I'm happy with it. It actually looks a little bit like waves. Wooden waves, but oh, what? What I am so, I, it's not what I had imagined. It's not at all what I thought it would be. But I don't know if I could be happier with that. <sighs> I did it, finished. <sighs> Thank you guys, much love. Please check out the other makers in this challenge. Link in the description. Also, if you want to know more about Suiseki, a quick, brief history that will melt your heart with rocks, I'll leave a video down below. And um, much love. I will see you next video. Thank you, Theo, you legend. Bye. I love it. Love it. Love it. Do you like it? News, Dad. <laughs>